I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club. I will do everything I possibly can. That's a glorious goal. That's a great save by Goal. And for Henrik Larsson! That's a great goal. Suck it. That's a golden goal for Celtic. Oh, yes! What a glorious goal for McNamara! A superb strike by the youngster. On the left bit of Marocci! A hat-trick for Henrik. A brilliant finish for Marocci! You won't see a better precision finish than this. And Alan Thompson gives Celtic the lead. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club. What a season. What a season. Bring you some success, said Martin Bank in June. Some success. Boy, can he understate. It's over 30 years since we last saw the treble at Paradise, when Big Jock achieved it for the second time in 1969. But, in just one short season, Martin O'Neill, the man now given the honorary prefix of Saint, has fulfilled our dreams and given us a season of outstanding football and memories that will have us into a barman. Make mine's a treble, pal, for many years to come. From start to finish, this season has been immense and overflowing with a kind of resolve and determination that Celtic fans have not seen for years. I'm always proud to be a Celtic fan, as we all are, but this season, the way in which the team have conducted themselves on and off the pitch, picked themselves up when they've been down and played brilliantly match after match, makes us all prouder than ever. In decades to come, there'll be fans still to be born wishing they'd been part of the treble winning season of 2000-2001. So that's reason enough to sit down now and enjoy it again. No excuses needed to do this. Let's just relive every moment, every deep breath, every shout, every tear and every cheer as we raise the League Cup, the League Championship and the Scottish Cup. And let's savour every delicious moment. Pre-season began with an air of familiarity all too common to Celtic fans. So many big names were being linked with the football club. Hus van Hiddink, Bertie Votes, even Vim Janssen. But it was Martin O'Neill, self-confessed Celtic fan, who emerged to address the fans from the steps outside Park Lane. Very, very much for waving in the rain. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, it's an absolute honour for me to be the manager here. I'm telling you that now. It's an absolute honour. No sooner had Martin signed and he was off to the European Championships, but he duly came back with the signature of Belgian internationalist defender Jos Valharn. It was an easy decision because uh, Celtic is a big club. And when people ask you, do you want to play for Celtic, it's, uh, for a football player like me, it's very easy to answer when it's a yes. The media were quick to question the signing, and this scepticism was mirrored when Martin paid out a record £6 million for out of favour Chelsea striker Chris Sutton. Celtic are a massive club with a, with a great history and uh, I'm sure Martin O'Neill's come up here and uh, we'll, we'll turn things around and, and uh, you know hopefully Celtic will be pushing for, for the league this year and, uh, and do well in Europe. You know that, that's important certainly for the fans here. Um, doing well personally is important but I think more important is doing well for the, the, the team and uh, winning the league is, is of uh, paramount importance. If we were to believe the hype, 
it was going to be downhill from here on in. But we've never been known for our pessimism, and a lucky few of us even put a wee fiver on the treble. Hmm. On the playing front, pre-season was hectic, and Martin O'Neill had a quick crash course on his players. A whistle-stop tour took the boys to play friendlies in Dublin, Copenhagen and Leipzig, before heading back to Parkhead to face Bordeaux and the home fans. We were speaking earlier about how we hope this season is going to be so much better than last and the man who hopefully is going to lead us to the promised land. Put your hands together please and make some noise for Martin O'Neill. Boys and girls, Martin is going to tell us what he thinks of this wonderful Celtic reception he's had this afternoon. Well, I thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. First of all, I've seen it before. It's absolutely fantastic. I genuinely hope I can bring you some success, us and the players, which you've obviously needed for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise one more time for our new manager, Martin O'Neill. Thank you. Bordeaux's pace and strength gave Martin O'Neill plenty of food for thought that afternoon in the sun. But one thing we could all take away with us was the return to form of a certain Swedish internationalist by the name of Henrik Larsson. And he places it beautifully in the corner. Those fans are delighted for Henrik Larsson. He has really struck in the sunshine. Didn't go for power. He went for precision. Larson is back. Boyd. Another useful looking ball. Larson there. Gets away from his marker. Larson brilliantly across. Burchell can't miss. Mark Burchell with a goal for Celtic, but made by Henrik Larson. Pure Larson skill. Burchell applied the finishing touch. Three days later, and the boys turned out again to take on West Ham and old favourite Paolo de Cano. Here's a sub, Gary Charles. Lovely little flick on that. Must be on it. A glorious goal by de Cano. Johnson and Petro scored to give us the victory. It's Lawson. Great chance for Lawson. Must be. Yes. Good position now for Petrov. Larson, great play. No offside. Could have been a second. It is. That's a glorious goal. But all thoughts were on the kickoff of the league, which followed just five days later. The opening day of the season saw the Celts travel to Tayside for a meeting with Dundee United. The fans were desperate to get the campaign going and get the first three points in the bag. And bang, it happened. As if to silence the critic speculation about his fitness, Larson netted the opener and new boy Sutton fired home the winner. Henrik was named man of the match, and O'Neill said to him after the game. I thought you were a good player, but I was wrong. You were a fantastic player. We could have told you that, Martin. Three more points were bagged against Motherwell the next weekend, with a Celtic team reduced to nine men showing the kind of steely determination that was sadly lacking last season. Martin O'Neill's first competitive match at Celtic Park as Celtic manager. In from McNamara. And back in from Lambert to Petrov. 
It's a wonderful strike by Stylian Petrov. And that had Martin O'Neill on his feet. He was bouncing up and down at Tannadice last Sunday. A lovely touch on his chest to control the ball. And the hook shot was well away from Andy Gorham. Next up, we travel to Luxembourg to meet Jeunesse Desch in the qualifying round of the UEFA Cup. Not a big team, but a match memorable for more than its 4 0 victory. Lambert tries his luck, finds Larson. Good interplay between Larson and Sutton again as he goes for the return ball. Jasper Ratchik! And Celtic lead. 36 minutes it's taken, but finally the deadlock is broken. And Ratchik, who's been as dangerous as any of the Celtic players in the opening period, deserving the goal. Now Sutton. Wonderful through ball as well. Maratchik, that is a stunning goal made by Sutton, executed by Maratchik, and Celtic finally get a second. Chris Sutton was outstanding, and selfishly creating three of the four goals. It was early days, but we could sense it. Sutton and Larson were a dynamic combination, capable of bringing us the success we craved. The star of the show, though, was Bobby Petter. Brimming with confidence under the influence of O'Neill, a new player was in evidence. Things were starting to look good. I didn't know exactly what I could do, and uh, I just knew that uh, I just needed a chance, and um, to, you know, to prove what I can do, um, and that's what I've been doing this season. Well, Martin O'Neill is uh, well encouraged uh, encouraged me to just go at people. Better driving forward, looks to be going a solo run. Right footed, another chance for Celtic. Uh, good effort by Bobby Petter. My strongest assets are uh, just uh, beating people and get crosses in, and that's what uh, you know, he encouraged me to do. And uh, for me, it was just to get and pick it up and and do it actually, do what I'm I'm good at. Plenty of space for Petrov, Bobby Johnson. Looking for a little bit of support, gets it. Not surprisingly, from Lambert. And here's Larson, yes! Larson, who's been able to elude the defenders with the greatest of ease, left with nobody covering him there. And he accepted it as a gift. Look at this. All in his own heel. And he kept remarkably composed. Larson, no offside. Johnson, can he put it away? He can, yes! No cover for Johnson. He picked it up and drilled it away. Celtic in the lead with about 18 minutes of the game remaining. With the point secured against Kelly, the boys headed down the M8 to Tyne Castle. But Chris Sutton showed he was worth every penny of the six million and he'll paid for him. Celtic menacing again. There's Sutton. He's done it. Chris Sutton scores his second goal for the club in the right position at the right time and answering his critics in the south in the most positive manner. Picked up well by Peter. Look at the curl in the ball, but the big fella had to be in the right place at the right time. Oh, there he is again! Sutton with the head. accommodation in the air as his heart's defence has given him. Amaratchik. There he is again almost in. Lambert just bounced in. There was a deflection. I think Larson might have got a touch. Lambert took it beautifully, drilling it in. Tomorrow, that's a bit of ball, and Hearts have pushed forward. They have gaps again. Sutton, there's Marabche, going around the outside. Yeah, it is, that does it. He took that so well, just when Hearts were getting back into the game. 4-2 to Celtic, and the boys maintain their unbeaten record. An excellent foundation for the first old firm class of the season, just over a week away. But before that, back to Europe. 
In the return against Jeunesse at Celtic Park, Mark Burchill scored the fastest hat-trick in European history with goals in the 12th, 14th and 15th minutes. Mark Burchill scores for Celtic. Long ball forward, well taken by Burchill. Can he get a shot on target? Here he does, another goal by Mark Burchill. Simon Lynch, eager to get involved as well. Good ball forward for Berkovic. Another opportunity for Celtic. Berkovic laying it back. Hat-trick for Mark Burchill. 14 minutes gone. And Mark Burchill scores his hat-trick. What an amazing start. This match from the boys added another four goals to Burchill's three, seven nothing on the night, eleven nothing on aggregate. A fantastic display. Passage was secured to the next round, but everyone's optimism was on hold ahead of the season's first meeting with Rangers. The 27th of August 2000, a date to remember for a long, long time. The Trinity of O'Neill, Steve Walford, and John Robertson was in place at the helm. The sun was shining, and the stage was set for an epic battle. Will we ever tire of watching this? Old firm games, sometimes unbelievable, often uncompromising, always unmissable. And after East Anglia, North West and London derbies, it's high time Chris Sutton stopped pussyfooting around. He's about to discover the real thing, the mother of all derbies. This game is what it's all about. It's why players play, it's why supporters support, and Stuart Dougal says it's why referees referee. They all match, you know. It's often been debated down the years as to which was the best old firm game, but it's quite simple, really. The best old firm game is the next one. It gets to you like that, and the next one is here. Yeah, both managers have been trying to play it down in, but uh, this is a biggie. Psychologically, this is a biggie. A Celtic win today would signal a rebirth under Martin O'Neill. A Rangers victory, well, it would let them claim the high sought psychological ground, and they've really had Celtic in a psychological arm lock over the last decade. Bobby Petter with an early surge on his old firm debut. And he'll get a free kick. Well, that's what Martin O'Neill will be looking for plenty of this afternoon. Bobby Pettit, full tilt here down the left-hand side, clearly tripped there. And he gives Celtic a free kick. Well, in fact, Stuart Dougal's given the corner. Maracic sends it in. And Stubbs and Larson are there. And it's turned in by Chris Sutton. Lucky. A gift from God for Chris Sutton. Lorenzo Amoruso screaming at the, at the stand side linesman for offside here. It sits up nicely for Sutton at the back post. I think he's on. Two Rangers players on the goal line. It breaks perfectly for him. Stefan Kloss with no chance whatsoever. And as you see there, he's well on side. And Celtic, Chris Sutton and Martin O'Neill have the start of their dreams. Celtic seeking a second, Maracic sends it in, and they have a second! And it's Petrov, who wasn't picked up, and it gets better and better for Martin O'Neill and for Celtic, a quite incredible start. Well, this is a deplorable marking here at the back post from Rangers. Stelian Petrov just runs off from Andrew Rickson. Good ball in by Maracic, but the marking is woeful there. Plenty of pace in the ball, into a great area for Petrov to come and attack it. But Rickson, well, he fell asleep. Maracic could be in. And they're queuing up here. It's another one for Paul Lambert. Three for Celtic. And in paradise, this is the stuff that Celtic dreams are made of. Bobby Petter was fouled white right. He let the play go on. Claims for offside. Maracic clearly on though. Checks back as the presence to pick out the supporting Lambert. Amaruso can't get close enough to him to close the shot down. Maracic has time to look up. He sees Lambert. And Lambert could not have struck it any sweeter. 
And well, it's mission impossible for Rangers now, Ian. Larson. Oh, he's in. Henrik Larson! That is sensational! He missed all four Oldberg games last season. But he rather enjoys making up for lost time. World class. Well, that is world class, Ian. A special goal from a very special player. Chris Sutton does magnificently well in the first place to win it over Amoruso. Lassen on his way, look at that skill. And he has the confidence, the composure and the technique to chip it over Stefan Kloss. Look at the arrogance in that finish. That, as you say, is the mark of a world-class player. Petter delivers. Larson's header! He's done it again! It's a double for Henrik Larson! It's number five for Celtic! Well, once again, it's a wonderful goal, Ian, but once again, you have to question the marking in the back for Rangers. Good delivery, whipped in by Petter, but look at the room that Henrik Larson has. Barry Ferguson, the nearest to him, and he's three yards off him. And it doesn't get any easier for strikers than this. A lot of work still to be done though, and Larson applies the deathest of headers to find the corner. But he should have been marked tighter than that. Petter now has released Stefan Mahi. Have Celtic got another one left in them? Sutton is there! Yes, they have! Sutton scores! It's six of the best for the very best today! Celtic! It's a great striker's goal, Ian. Because he can't have much left gas in his tank, but he still makes sure he's at the back post when the ball comes in here. And he has to make up a lot of ground. You see him on the far side there. Times are run to perfection. Drifts off Amoruso. One touch is enough. And what an old firm debut for Chris Sutton. Martin O'Neill said all he lacked is confidence. Well, he certainly won't lack it now. He's a hero in the stand of Glasgow today. We always try to play as a team, but today we were really on fire. Everybody wanted really to win, as you always want, but today things went our way. No, I mean, you probably sense it when you come through the doors and now the manager's installed a, an unbelievable, I don't know, it's just a, an air of confidence, as you've said there. He, he makes you play better and uh, he, he makes you want to win. He's got enough of, of a will to win and uh, it's really good into the players and hopefully if we can maintain that, you know, you never know. I mean, it's a great, great win. Uh, you know, I know the feeling between the clubs and it's great to be a part of a winning you know Celtic side but uh, you know the main thing is, is is for us to win the SPL this year and uh, you know it's a good start I mean these, these derbies are important um, and it's, it's good for us to come out on top and you know maybe this year if we keep winning games they'll be playing catch up with us your beauty I was sitting there gobsmacked as the boys just kept banging them in one two three it's only 12 minutes and there was Martin O'Neill leaping in the air, and every time he leapt up in the air, our hearts leapt with him. That man knows how to deliver. And scoring more than five goals against Rangers for the first time since 1957 was the way to do it. Unbelievable. But true. Good things come in free, so they say. And after Burch's hat-trick and putting six past the Jers, her first run out in the CIS Cup led to another record for the boys. A 4-0 victory over Wraith Rovers was the first in our history to have all Englishmen on our score sheet. Alan Thompson made his debut and found the net along with Sutton and Tommy Johnson who netted a double. No slip-up so far and everything to play for. At the end of the day, you're paid to play football, and I wasn't playing football at Villa, and um, I love playing football, and that's all I wanted to do. So when I had a chance to come and join Celtic, you know, it's, that was that was good enough for me. I mean, it's been dragging on for a few weeks, and uh, I'm just delighted everything's gone through now, and I can, I can get on with playing football. I know a few of the boys, I know a few of the boys, and I know they've um, they've just uh, brought a, a great manager in, in Martin O'Neill, and um, he's going to take the club forward in leaps and bounds. All I want to concentrate on doing is getting in a Celtic team and everything might come from there and if it does come after that then that's great but first and foremost I just want to play well for uh, Celtic.
As was the case all season, the fixture list was congested and it was straight back into league action and a momentous day for us all. At Paradise on the 9th of September, we beat Hibs 3-0 to go top of the league, a position we revelled in until the end of the season. Larson, the man who was still the subject of debate over his fitness, netted yet another two goals. We all looked forward to him being fully fit. Larson not picked up by Hibbs. And when it was lofted in by Luba Maravcic, Henrik Larson was waiting to pounce. Henrik Larson can still be a threat from midfield, as Hibbs are about to find out from Lambert and Birchall. And 3-0. He's done so much damage up front as Henrik Larsson to Hibbs this afternoon. Now he does it from the midfield. It was another double from the Swede that gave us a 2 0 victory over Helsinki in the first round proper of the UEFA Cup. Neat little cutback. That's a good ball and it's there. Larsson in the air once again. Almost 15 minutes gone and it's the exquisite judgment of the man in the air that makes it Looks so easy, although it never is. Nabaravchik. Sutton, little ball inside. And that's it, second goal. Larson plots it away with the greatest of ease. This was ten in a row for Martin O'Neill, and an opportunity for the world of football to witness the fantastic understanding journey between Yalbi and Valharn at the back. Four days later, and it was a treble for Larson in his third double in a row, scoring both goals in a 2-1 victory at Dunfermline. But it wasn't an easy game. The three points came our way with just five minutes to go. It's Stevie Crawford, and it's 1-0 to Dunfermline, and what a shocker for Celtic. Paul Lambert, lovely one-two, Lambert goes down, and a penalty to Celtic, would you believe? Incredible, two quick penalties in this contest. It's Henrik Larsson, and it's 1-1, and once again, a perfect penalty from a perfect player. Well, oh, Martin O'Neill couldn't have asked for a better response yet. Once again, it's a fine penalty under pressure. Has been known to go for power, Henrik Larsson. And just strokes it away. Routen Beck going the wrong way. Larsson. Oh, lovely little touch from Larsson and Thompson back to Henrik Larsson, who's onside! and scores and Celtic may just make it 11 wins on the spin after all but my word they've had to work mighty hard for it well Deferman claiming for offside Henrik Larsson wasn't asking any questions he was quite happy to play on and it'll be interesting to see this again Larsson involved in the beginning of the move with the back heel continues his run and as he's played in he's onside there I think and he has the composure and the class to tuck it away Created and finished by Henrik Larsson. And he wasn't asking any questions, he got on with the job there. Alan Thompson who played him in. Wrong foot's the keeper and he wasn't going to miss from there on in. Even though Dunfermline put up a good fight, there was a real air of security about Celtic's performance. We knew we had a team that would fight tooth and nail until the final whistle. And that's what wins you championships. A 1-0 victory over Dundee at home and we retained a 100% league record ahead of the return UEFA tie in Helsinki. Smith getting there. But once again, every time they pop the ball out from right about the 18-yard line, it's falling to a Celtic foot. Hence the constant pressure. Larson. Thompson trying to get it to that left foot of his... And that's it, Petrov. Oh, 
Carpenter scoring, coming in from the back there. And Nick Skimming caught out of position. No cover for the goalkeeper and the young Bulgarian put Celtic in the lead. I make it 17 minutes into the second half. And the constant pressure paying off. If you keep at a defence like that, eventually their organisation will break down. And it did on the left-hand side. No cover. Result, 1-0. Finland may have been cold, but the atmosphere was on fire when we lost two goals to force the tie to extra time. The heat was most definitely on when with a dreaded penalty shootout looming, £6 million man Sutton fired home to clinch the tie on aggregate. Up goes Larson towards the goalkeeper. Didn't seem too confident about that, the pressure still on Petrov. There's a shot, that's it! They've done it! They badly needed that. Sutton coming in there. Timely intervention. They worked very hard for it. And that's as important a goal, both in terms of prestige and financially, as he scored since he's come to Celtic. The next round will bring a rematch against Bordeaux and a chance to battle to stay in Europe beyond Christmas for the first time in 17 years. With the beginning of October and our first match back in league action, we dropped two points against Aberdeen. Swept and it goes, that's it! Henrik Larsson does it again! Ten-man side couldn't capitalise on Larsson's goal and we watched our 100% league record slip away. Still, there were lessons to be learned and Martin O'Neill hadn't disappointed us yet. If we had been delighted with O'Neill's acquisition so far, the debut of a GAT against St Mirren surpassed that. His pace alone was well worth the 10 bob we paid for him. Well, in today's transfer money, it was about that. I think I proved myself in, with Fabianian and uh, started to do well with them. But Celtic is a big club and I think everybody would like to play this team. Larson, a GAT comes in. Can he put it away? Once again, opened up there by Larson. He did everything right. And the crowd were willing to put this in the back of the net. I am not believe the first time, but after when the manager of fun says, OK. And to cap it all, our old rivals across the water dropped points. Thompson hovering on the edge of the box, and that's in! Sutton gets his head to it. Well, that was coming. The pressure mounting and floating the ball high into the penalty has been causing this defence no end of trouble and with the best uh, of efforts of Turner it couldn't be kept out Sutton rising up uh, brilliantly there all it required was a touch seventh goal of the season for the man Larson with serious intent Ryan puts it in, it's there! Well, I said they had to relieve the tension and they've done it brilliantly. We were climbing out on top of that league table and to every fan in the terrace, nothing was going to stop us. Celtic were more determined than we'd seen them for a long, long time. And as if they needed to prove anything else to us, they did anyway. With points won in difficult conditions at Perth, and at home to Dundee United. And it goes, and that's it! Larson again! 
Henry Clarkson has this ability to pick the side up as he did in Aberdeen, almost exact replica of the way he put it in the net of Pitodre. As I was saying, they had this uh, defence covered so very well. And at a vital time, 11 minutes before half-time, up he pops again in a cluster of players and made it look ridiculously simple after all the hopping and popping in front of goal that preceded it. This so was Larson's supposedly unlucky 13th goal of the season. Oh, if only they'd known. And when Alan Thompson fired home the second half... Beautifully inside, that's a great goal! Picked up beautifully by Thompson, reading from that deep position. Celtic were now 12 points clear of Rangers at the top of the table. No matter how well you're doing in the league, a big tie in Europe brings a few butterflies. Bordeaux were a good side, and we all remember the pre-season trouncing back in July. And lurking in the back of everyone's mind was Larson's leg break in Lyon the year before. Needless to say, what a match. This was a fantastic Celtic performance, and I don't suppose anyone needs reminding who got the equaliser for us. The Bordeaux fans making plenty of noise behind that goal, and the set piece ends up with the opening goal. And it's Christophe Dugani who gives Bordeaux the lead. 22 minutes gone. First set piece, first goal. And Celtic couldn't keep a match at the near post. Didier Agat heading for the byline, turns the ball in. It's Diabate that's there, and that must be a penalty kick. And it is. Tremendously quick feet from Henrik Larsson, which won the penalty for Celtic. Bordeaux protest. But no doubt about it, Gordon. I thought it was a penalty. Henrik Larson have seen them not given to be hit, but the referee was very quick to point to the spot. They're complaining about it still. But you can see here, here the defender takes a touch. Larson comes across, robs him, and the challenge comes through, and he's, he's made contact. Henrik Larson just gets a little touch in front of him. Look at this. Just takes it, just knocks him over. So, Henrik Larsson, who won the penalty kick, will now take it. And scores! That's a golden goal for Celtic. 1-1, and Martin O'Neill leads the celebrations. 25 minutes gone. Romy went one way, the ball went the other. Celtic back on level terms. Yeah, superbly cool. Henrik Larsson keeps on scoring goals, penalties or otherwise, but uh, he took that so well. And as you said, a golden goal, very important. European football nowadays, over two legs that you score away from home. Vital from their point of view and uh, puts them right back in this game and, and probably uh, makes up for the mistake they made at that, losing that first goal. And Martin O'Neill delighted. The away support in Bordeaux was simply extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Not only did the French people uh, themselves feel that it was extraordinary, I did. And the, the vocal support that we got, and I'm telling you, and I don't want to sound sycophantic about this here, but they did as much as anything to get as a result out there. Superb. But there was still important business to take care of on the domestic front. Three days after Bordeaux, it was off to third part, and a six-goal thriller in the league. Or was it really seven? Bobby Petters corner and Stevie Woods was flapping at it and Mialbi has managed to bundle it in. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Johan Mialbi, Celtic, take an early lead. Elliot once again showing that he's very good in the air. Spencer with McCulloch waiting for the centre. Is it going to go in eventually? It is. And it's Adams and Motherwell celebrate an equaliser. In it comes eventually from Spencer. And it's in from Lee McCulloch. Motherwell are 2-1 up and have Celtic met their match. Alan Thompson whips it in. Larson is there. was in the right place, at the right time, 2-2. Alan Thompson's corner. Oh, it's an awkward one! And did it cross the line? Mialbi felt that it did. 
He was fuming there, Mialbi. And it uh, is not going to count, but Celtic really felt it should have done. Yeah, I'd like to see this one again. Well, was this a goal? That's the question. And it comes, Stevie Wood in no man's land. Wow, well, that's over the line. That is over the line for me. It wasn't even close, was it? Kamara. And he's got it back here. And can he get it back again? He can. Jackie McNamara! Oh, yes! What a glorious goal for McNamara! Celtic should have been 3 2 up earlier. They are now. That's a wonderfully constructed goal. And all of the credit has to go to Jackie McNamara. Two beautiful exchanges here on the edge of the box. The first was Petrov. The second with Larson, who does well to get it back to him. Not convinced he strikes the shot perfectly at all. But Stevie Woods is wrong footed and it trundles in to the corner of the net. One touch and then the strike. And I'm not convinced he caught that one well at all, but he won't be complaining. And given the one that Johan Melby had disallowed, no more than Celtic deserve, I suppose. Penalty! Melby's challenge on Goodman and incredibly. It's a chance for Motherwell to equalise. Well, Goodman invites the challenge, he makes the run into the perfect area. And that is pretty conclusive for me here. His body contact, his right arm's up. Not a great deal in it, but enough for Hugh Dallas correctly, I think, to point to the spot. It's Brannan, and it's 3-3 in a quite captivating contest. The replays in the tele confirmed what we all knew. Mialbi's goal should have counted. But the luck was with Motherwell and they fought hard for the three each draw. However, we were still in a fantastic position. Top of the league and then with a shout in Europe. This was shaping up to be our year. <laughs> The 1st of November saw us at Tynecastle for the CIS Cup quarter final. Our confidence in the terracing oozed onto the pitch, and when Neil fielded the three youngsters, Craney, Smith, and Healy, our faith in their ability was 100%. Just kept in, Kirk has got a bit of pace about him. Did very well, and Balkaran's in position. There's Juan Joe, penalty kick. Juanjo taken out there, reset, whom we complimented for his tackling earlier in the game, and he takes with a dragging leg. And in the eye of the storm, Colin Cameron. Great responsibility, and he puts it away. Hearts have taken the lead. Colin Cameron did remain cool after all. It's a lucky little break, that wasn't a bad ball at all, now coming in there with the left foot, oh, it's a great goal, Trenny, a superb strike by the youngster. It wasn't the easiest of balls to take, but I did talk about that great left foot of his earlier in the day, and here is ample proof of it coming up now. It really was a great strike, but look at the step over took the Hearts defence with surprise, but even then he still had to hit a good shot, and it was a really good strike, he kept his head, knew what he was doing, kept his eye on the ball, controlled the shot, superb strike, good ball from, good work from Tommy Johnson initially, there's the step over it through the, the Hearts defence, and lovely striking, lovely hit into the net. That's a nice little ball through, that's a great goal! Tremendous finish by Smith. And the youngster who was foiled earlier on took that with remarkable maturity. It was a lovely pass from McNamara, wasn't it? Uh, Jimmy Smith has got away from the two defenders, beautiful ball. One touch, ball in front of him, tremendous strike. 
Well, you know, it, it wasn't the easiest ball to take either with the two defenders no, converging right. on him. He gave himself that little bit of room, stole away from the two defenders, super straight from that distance. Petric. Miss Wanjo, is he elusive enough? Fulton, that's not a bad ball, and away. Bible Hallen again. Nielsen, the penalty kick. The referee had no doubt about that, and Volcheren, I think, is the culprit as he goes round here. Up went the arms on the blind side of the plane. You could see him hooking it away. And the second penalty to Hearts. There were no complaints that time. And could Jonathan Gould outguess Cameron this time he can't the same corner and Hearts are back on level terms in this remarkable cup tie and so the Jambos forced the game to extra time the boys had certainly put in a good shift in the first 90 minutes but somehow they managed to find an extra gear and three more goals put the tie beyond any doubt emphatically Johnston McNamara had a quick look away across the field, decided on the shorter one, but Thompson makes it for him. Arpeda. Johnson with the header, this could be it! It is! Healy puts it away! Johnson... Tries to put it in right, but it's there. Moravchik. Well, well, well. Suddenly, the youngsters snap. Again, we had praised them so much. He let Moravchik get away, and that finishes it. Credit to Lubo Moravchik for creeping in at the back. And a touch of rawness there from the youngster. Ball watching, and they suffered. McNamara, he's gone to left floor and he does it again, that's a glorious goal. They are rubbing it in now. Now as Celtic fans we all have one common dream and that's playing for the jersey. But when you realise that just ain't gonna happen, you want nothing more than to watch a young lad come through. And what a joy it was to see that three-fold when each of the young boys scored. <laughs> Tremendous. Just like the old days of the quality street kids. Valhaven to Agat, inside then outside, away from Mitchell, deflected off Ali Mitchell and here's a chance and Alan Thompson gives Celtic the lead, not picked up as he came in at the far post, there was a deflection on the way as the ball came in and Alan Thompson opens the scoring. Well, it came at the end of the best spell of football in the game, Rob. Both ends, Kamara had very good attacks, but unfortunate deflection across the Kelly defence, but there was three Celtic players all going for it. Kamara was standing still at the same time. Look at this, there's deflected. Lassen's missed it there. Thompson has done very well to sneak in at the back post and put that away. Another three points secured against Kelly lined us up nicely for what would be our biggest test of the season so far. The return against Bordeaux. From Moravchik. Supported by Petter. Trying to get in behind Bobby Petter. Good run. The cross was disappointing, as was the header clear. And Moravchik has scored! A brilliant finish from Moravchik. And Celtic have what could be an all-important goal. Even the corner flag gets a kiss. Yeah, that was so important for Celtic to get the breakthrough. Good work, we have to say, from Petta on the left-hand side. It was Moravchik that fed him originally, too. The ball would not cleared all that well, and uh, he's got a race with Larson. Larson did the right thing, stepping out of the way, and he's just driven that. I think the keeper's unsighted, Rob, to be honest with you, because he's a bit slowing it down, having just made a marvel save. Look at that, it's just come round the edge of a defender and off the post. Terrific shot, keeping it down low. David Jamali. Away from Johnson. Here's a chance for Butless. And it's a goal for Lillian Lasland. 
Celtic Park is silenced. 11 minutes left. And there's the sucker punch, and that could be the goal that takes this tie into extra time. Bastos pass. Here's Laszlon shooting chance. Lillian Laszlon for Bordeaux. And that could be the end for Celtic. 25 minutes gone of stoppage time. The celebrations are for Bordeaux, 3-2 up on aggregate, and Celtic now need two goals. Yeah, that's a killer blow at this stage, very hard to come back from. You think he's been it always seems to happen in Europe, to say, but just when the finishing line was within grasping distance, I mean, the match was stolen from us in a late injury time winner. The blow was sickening, and, uh, but the fans walked out of the stadium with their heads held high. We might have been out of Europe, but we were still top of the league and playing for the cup. I've been involved in a lot of football throughout my years, a lot of European football as well too, and that was hard to take. We absolutely, we dominated the game from start to finish. We were absolutely fantastic. I could not ask for a nine more, couldn't ask for a nine more from the crowd, couldn't ask for a nine more from anyone. And in a great, great night, we've ended up getting beaten. I have no idea how, but that's the game. Don't get me wrong, Bordeaux are a very good side. But for long, long periods in the game, we made them second rate. And we haven't been able to uh, finish the game off. We got a goal thoroughly deserved. And uh, we have a couple of chances to go, uh, you know, make it, just put it beyond them. And they've scored with virtually their first time that they've broken into their penalty box. What, 78, 79 minutes, whatever it may be. Our confidence was boosted by the debut of big keeper Robert Douglas and 10 goals past St. Johnson and Harps in less than a week. Thompson's got a good left foot, of course. Might get it in yet. Plays it aside, and that's a great goal. Suck it. Yes, he took it so well. And he simply wore down the St. Johnson defence. Well, that's in, yes. Cleanly taken. He's hardly been in the game. But then, that's a mark of quality. That's all sin. Oh, what a goal. Oh. For a moment, I thought that was going to hit the post. Or that the goalkeeper would have got to it. No wonder he's delighted. Silla did that well. Dasovic didn't. Thompson must put it through here. Now then, Larson ought to put it away. With delightful ease. When he gets a chance like that, he makes it look ridiculously simple. Of course, it never is. Severin again. Here's Colin Cameron. A brilliant goal by Cameron. 13 minutes gone. It's been all Celtic so far, and that's the sucker punch. Here's the free kick. In from Tom Boyd. Petar finding a way through. Valharan! Superb from Jos Valharan. His third goal for Celtic, and that's the best of the lot. Hearts had the lead for only two minutes. Set up by the cutback from Petta. And you won't see a better precision finish than this. Alan Thompson having a look at the penalty box. Sutton and Larson and Mialbi and Valharan all waiting. Headed away by Severin. On the left foot of Moravchik! 2-1 Celtic. Ten minutes left in the first half. The scorer of the equaliser, Valharan. Chested down by Larson for Petrov. Agat. Henrik Larson. Off Niemi. Henrik Larson. 3-1. Mistake this time by Niemi. In again from Moravchik! 
It's Johan Mjalby. Denied earlier by the heroics of Niemi. But he wasn't going to be denied this time. The short corner played in by Moravchik and Hart's guilty of not picking up their men. Fulton's lost it to McNamara. Johnson and Henrik Larsson, chance for number five. It is five. It trickled over the line, but that won't bother most people inside the stadium. And it won't bother Henrik Larsson. Now 21 goals for the season. Larsson's pass. And Didier Agat turning it into an excellent one. Is it to be six? It is. Stylian Petrov. The happy half dozen for Celtic. Celtic and Rangers are the two biggest clubs in Scotland and it was, I was pleased to be linked with them both but uh, when I spoke to Martin that was it for me. Yeah. Right side. Good reach, Ron. I had quite a warm welcome for the boys. Uh, I came back to training, my shoes were all taped up, the, the socks were cut in half, uh, the boxer shorts were deep heated but uh, I'm quite into that, That's my kind of, I can appreciate that. It's a long four and a half years and I think I know a couple of the guys so uh, it's a great spirit again, you know, there's a good bunch of boys in there, so that's the main thing. O'Neill's team was beginning to take shape and the tie against Rangers at Ibrox was eagerly awaited. And so to Ibrox. If you told us what the result was going to be that day, there's no Celtic fan who would have believed it. Get this over with quick, will you? It was just as the man had been telling us all along, there's no room for complacency and lessons had to be learned despite the positive results so far. But all credit to the boys coming back from such a hefty defeat. Battling through atrocious conditions, they won a hard fought point against Hibs just three days later. Next up was Dunfermline at home and the boys went on to show their mettle after the Pars took the lead inside the first minute. Iceford will touch there, just overdoing it though. I dare again, and that's in! Dunfermline have scored in exactly 54 seconds. It's Moravchik. Put that through, good play, Johnson. Now Petro from the run, and just beyond, and that's it! Beautifully struck by Moravchik, the equaliser. Confirmland left, woefully exposed on the right-hand side, acknowledges the adulation of the crowd there. Now, this had to be kept done. Good run by Petrov. This is an excellent ball across the face of the goal. Now, that's not the easiest of chances. I've seen a lot missed from that. But he kept it simply well, though, drilled into the corner. Skinner. 
But having said that, that was still a very, very tight angle. Well, I think the reputation of this man preceded him. Because Skinner seemed to be overawed by his presence. Look at this. Now, here is where he had to be deadly accurate and cool. And that combination put Celtic 2 1 up after 20 minutes. The corner and Larson almost gets it. It's a goal, though. Johnson gets it. He'll be delighted with that. Substitute today for Chris Sutton. Or coming in in place of Chris Sutton, rather. And down he went. Had to be courageous to get down to that. And as I said, there's now about uh, just under 11 minutes of the game remaining, and that should do it. At Dane's part a week later, all eyes were on Neil Lennon in his much-awaited debut. When Neil had fought a long battle to secure his arrival at Paradise, and he did not disappoint. Lennon was the missing piece of this jigsaw. And the big picture? The treble. With five games to go before the break, we were desperate to go into the split and pole position. A known goal unnerved us cancelling out Petrov's early opener, but the boys battled on, and Didier Agat picked the best possible moment to net his first goal for Celtic. In the dying seconds of an intense fixture, Didier snatched a goal and gave us victory. What a nail-biter. I think the squad's really strong. Uh, a lot better uh, than what I thought, and... Uh, We've certainly improved even more since it's happened here. And, uh, you know, we look very, very resolute, physically very strong. You know, we've got that air of uh, confidence about us as well. And that comes, obviously, with not losing games. And, um, you know, even if we do go a goal down or whatever, you know, the, uh, you know we're, we're still feel we can get ourselves back in the game. You know, we've played in the 90 minutes and everyone's totally committed to each other. You know, even the boys coming off the bench are making big contributions. And, uh, you know, as a squad, it's as good as any I've been involved in. Things could only get better, and they did, when new boy Ramon Vega, making his debut after signing from Spurs, netted two in a 6 0 trouncing of Aberdeen. Alan Thompson's pass intended for Bobby Petter. And Henrik Larsson. It's taken only four minutes for Celtic to hit the front. Aberdeen opened up with ease. Up goes Ramon Vega, there he is! What a start! He made it clear as he wandered forward, Ramon Vega, that he wanted the ball played to him, drifted away from his marker, and as easy as you like. He's only been a Celtic player for 18 minutes in terms of on-field action, and this is his first goal for the club. Uh, full steam ahead for a gut. Johnson, Larson, surely this time. He had to get another one eventually, didn't he, Henrik Larson? And Larson makes it 25 goals for the season. His strike rate is phenomenal. Although, in truth, he might well have had four or five by now here. Larson's layoff. Good ball in from Alan Thompson. And Henrik Larson onto it. That is sensational. A hat trick for Henrik. And that was something special. It was Henrik Larson who started it off with the layoff for Thompson. Then he was off and running right around the Aberdeen defence. And what a blistering finish that is with his right foot on the volley, right into the top corner. The corner kick from Lennon. That's Vega! Ramon Vega does it again. Two goals on his debut, and now 5-0 for Celtic. Inside the last two minutes with Jamie Smith. 
It's six. And a second goal of the season for youngster Jamie Smith. Aberdeen in all sorts of disarray at this stage and caught out badly here. With three matches to play before the split, Agat picked Celtic's first trip in ten years to Love Street to score his second with Henrik the King netting the winner and astoundingly his 100th goal of his Celtic career. The Boxing Day tie at Tannadice was beset with freezing weather and heavy snow, but nothing could stop four goals and a superb performance from Stylian Petrov. No hint of a New Year's hangover, well, on the pitch anyway. Sutton's double and Larson's double double secured the points against Kilmarnock. Celtic's position, nestling high at the top of the championship as they went into the split, was assured. And Chris Sutton scores! Flicked on by Larson for Sutton, a neat back heel. Down goes Petrov. And Henrik Larsson scores number two. As the debates were going on about whether that was or wasn't a penalty, Henrik Larsson was untroubled as he tucked the ball away for his 29th goal of the season. Long ball from Mjelby, stretching out was Larsson, and here's Chris Sutton, a chance to make it number three. Well, that's got to go down as poor defending by Kilmarnock. Chris Sutton unchallenged to score his second of the game. His 13th goal for Celtic. That's a lovely pass with the outside of the right foot from Johan Mjalby. And here's Henrik Larsson to score his second goal. It's almost scoring by numbers. It's that simple for Celtic. 4-0. Poor pass from Dundula. And Kilmarnock on the back foot again. Thompson. Gets it back from Larson and Henrik Larson in for his hat-trick. Trick for Henrik and 5 0 for Celtic. Well, give us a smile, Martin. He's got to be happy with that. And the misery continues for Kilmarnock. Neil Lennon. Good ball from Larson to Maracic. Driven in low at the near post. Here's Henrik Larson. Could it be number four for Larson? It could. Six nil, Celtic. Unstoppable. And you just knew, despite the odds being stuck against him initially, that Henrik Larson would find a way to goal. He's done it so often. That was Gary Hay who missed it at the near post. Larson yet again applying the finishing touch and now for him 32 goals this season it's 6-0 Celtic three minutes left much talk was given to the title being won but O'Neill continued to remind us that there was still a long road ahead a journey however with a slightly lighter load but the euphoria of the season was marred by the shocking news of the illnesses of Alan Stubbs and Morton Vigost 
Stubbsy was stunned to learn of the recurrence of cancer, and Big Martin fell victim to Guillaume Barry syndrome, an illness which led him into intensive care. The support for the two cells was immense, and their determined fight to recovery and fitness has been inspirational. During the winter break, Martin O'Neill whisked the boys off to the Florida heat where they trained in the sunshine and got a chance to check out some American opposition. Some say a change is as good as a rest, but the pitch for the tie against the University of South Florida in Tampa was frightening, not relaxing. Still, the match gave Martin a chance to play around with his tactics in a closed door match against the fledgling side. The highlight of the trip though, was the match against Tampa Bay Mutiny in front of 4,500 Celtic supporters, euphoric at the rare opportunity to see the boys in action. The American support were treated to an inaugural airing of the new first team strip and a chance to see legend Valderrama in action. I've never experienced a winter break myself, uh, all throughout the, the seasons in the Premier League, uh, both as a player and as a manager. And uh, so it is a wee bit strange, and it will be very, very interesting to see how we, re we readjust when we come back again. The boys might have been in a break, but they couldn't leave the league behind as the presentation for the SPL manager and player of the month occurred in Orlando in the superb training facilities at Disney's World of Sport Resort. No prizes for guessing that Martin O'Neill and Henrik Larsson were the recipients. Oh, obviously delighted, but... Uh... I mean, it just uh, shows how the team is playing because it gives me a chance to play well, get a, get a few goals, and uh, that's just, um, yeah, it's, it's for the whole team, really, I think. So, are we breaking the sun to recharge the batteries ahead of part two of the season? The jungle drums were already beating to the tune of a possible treble. That was possible. And from what we'd seen so far, it was looking very possible. There wasn't a member of the backroom staff or a player or a supporter throughout the world not up for it or who didn't want to believe that it really could happen. <laughs> Ah, you're back. Right, OK, where were we? January. Season restarting after a winter break and all he played for. The team made their way back from the Florida sunshine to find themselves sitting proud at the top of the table. Nine points clear of Hibs and a staggering 12 ahead of another Glasgow team. The first challenge after the break was Strun Rad in the Scottish Cup. The media took a certain glee in reminding us of the devastation that was the Inverness Cali match last time round. As if it wasn't already praying in our minds. But any pre-match snares were quickly dismissed as the Celts romped home, keeping us well on course for a domestic treble. On top of that, the game saw the welcome return of Paul Lambert, who'd been sidelined with a stress fracture since November. It's Lennon to whip this in, and Ramon Vegas on the end of it! And it's bundled in by Valhallen, and Celtic go 1-0 up. So Stranraer temporarily down to 10 men, with Keith Knox getting patched up. Here's Henrik Larsson, and Jackie McNamara could be in here, and he is! McNamara clinically claims Celtic's second early in the second half. Well, it's a terrific finish from Jackie McNamara. Thompson. Sutton. One of those little layoffs again for Henrik Larsson, he can't get a glimpse of goal. Bobby Petter did though, oh it's an own goal from Knox! Oh it gets even worse for him. What a shame for Keith Knox. Paul oh, Maracic could be in here, he's on his own, although Lennon is arriving. Maracic goes for goal himself, oh and it's squeezed past Mark Nagio and in. And Celtic have a fourth through Lubomir Maracic. Yeah, well, I mean, he can take it on either side. He's so good with either foot. Quite happy to go on to his left side here. When the old firm come to Edinburgh, it always raises the stakes. A bit of a media circus had developed over whether Lambert and Will Lennon could play together in the same team. 
but the first league clash since the restart put paid to any doubts. We now had a partnership in midfield as formidable as Larson and Sutton up front. I think we both bounce off each other, like, you know, uh, got a good understanding already. Great to play with, you know, proofs in the pudding really, as I said all along it would be, and uh, I'm really enjoying playing alongside him, and I hope he is with me. Oh, and Larson only went and bagged another hat trick. Well, the free kick towards Sutton, and what a start for Celtic. Just the start they wanted, and Larson has struck. Thompson, he's skipped away from Tomasek. Thompson centre, and look who's in there! That is brilliant! And Celtic clinically claim their second goal, and it's a double for Henrik Larsson. Uh, came out of nothing, it's the same combination as well. Alan Thompson did so well. Little change of pace on the halfway line to take him clean on the left-hand side. Has a look up, and a look at Larsson coming blindside over Grant Murray here. Half a yard is all he needs, and that is a magnificent finish with the outside of his right foot. Larson looking to get away. He's got Didier Gap away to his right hand side. He might well bring him into it. He does. A Gap's cross. Larson for Hattrick. He's done it. 3 0. A Hattrick for Hendrick. Tell you what, he adjusts his position here about three times when a gap looks up. He watched Larson's movement here. He goes front post first of all, checks out, then drops off. The crest of that particular wave took us to the CIS Cup semi final and a meeting with Rangers at Hamden. After being beaten back in November, some had the other lot down as overwhelming favourites, but this Celtic team were beginning to show that they really were something special. Thompson again. It's a vicious looking one off the bar, and that's it. Vega comes up there, gets his head to it. And Sutton puts the ball in the back of the net. The Celtic end erupts. Good work by Vega initially. There's the header off the bar, and Sutton, nobody covering him. Celtic a one up. There's, I think, the referee is saying that's the second goal. Larson follows through and gets the second goal as a youngster, Robert Malcolm, was left stranded there on his own against the most lethal attacker in the United Kingdom. And he got in such a tangle. Perfectly correct decision by the referee. There's Wilson getting away with it. Penalty awarded. A penalty awarded for that challenge by Wilson. Then it goes there and he's leaning into him. And the referee is awarded the penalty for that. Larson burrowing his way in there. And this could put it beyond Rangers at this stage in the game. Larson to take it. That's it. 3 1. And he's much more delighted now. Yeah, he's, gone, he's gone for power and accuracy. Actually, he's kept it down low. Stefan Kloss has guessed the wrong way. And he's tucked it in the corner there. And it's a replica of Albert's uh, penalty yep. himself. At and now Rangers really have their very difficult task to pick this one up. Being 2 0 up so early as we were last night, um, we sat back and let them come onto us. And they're, they're good players and they keep the ball well. But uh, I thought certainly that 3 1, uh, well, even through most of the game, they weren't really penetrating. And I don't think Jonathan Gould had really a save to make. I think they had the penalty and that was about it and a couple of crosses. But. Uh, so, I mean, for myself and Henrik, it is hard work in the fact that we have to, you know, do a lot of running, certainly across the back. Um, 
But I mean, it's, it's not a problem when you're 2 0 up, you know, against Rangers. You, you seem to find it, you know, a bit more. And so Celtic secured their first victory over Rangers in the League Cup competition for 19 years. Well, we started this season breaking records. It was just good manners to keep the habit going. The CIS clash was in fact the first of a double header with Rangers. The tally for the season so far was 2-1 in our favour. And of course we were determined to make it a treble of victories over them. Up popped Alan Thompson and hey presto, we're 12 points clear at the top of the table. 16 minutes gone. Still no goals. Larson's flicked to Sutton. Henrik Larson again. Here's a chance. And Celtic will open the scoring. And it's Alan Thompson. Celtic picked a hole in the centre of the Rangers' defence. And it's Thompson who makes it 1-0. We're in a final and we're, we're going well in the league at the moment, but um, there's, a, there's a long way to go. We've, we've had a good run, we're still waiting for a patch where things don't go quite so well, and uh, you know, I'm sure that that time will come. But as uh, you know, how we get through that patch, which we'll, uh, which we'll see, you know, how we're going to go. There's no letting up, it's no as if every game looks like they're going to battle it, and it will be a battle, they'll, they'll, not be, they'll not be beat. Definitely. The dressing room spirit now is just, you know, I mean, absolutely, uh, absolutely good. Because uh, obviously, when last season and, and this season, personally, I can feel a big change. You know, everybody's just happy to come in and, and, and do a good job and work hard and put a lot of effort in, in the training sessions. And um, you know, there's a, a lot of, you know, I mean, um, uh, you know, happy feelings when, when you get into the, the dressing room, and it's just been good. I think at times we haven't played particularly well in one games, and uh, being effective for me is more important than uh, being a than playing pretty stuff every week and winning a game here and there and playing great stuff. But some some of the away games we've got through this season has uh, you know been vital for us to be in the position we're in. Uh, but everybody, as I said, is in it together, and we know what, that what we can do. And obviously we showed on. Uh, on that Sunday, that we can we can beat Rangers. Obviously, they're you know still the, a very good side, the best team. Still, no, but we've got so many good players, and and we've got a chance. We've proved that you know we can beat them. So we've got obviously a good chance to you know to go and and, and get the championship this season. Certainly, at the start of the season, I think even to get cl really close to Rangers would have uh, would have been a big improvement on on last season. Anyway, but having said that, the position we're in. Um, you know, it would uh, it, it would be very tough to take. You know, not not winning the league from the position we're in at the moment. So uh, I think all the players are focused. We're confident, but um, you know, I don't think there's any complacency in the dressing room. Because I like the spirit. Even I see it when maybe we have went a goal down. When you uh, maybe last year, mm. years before, they just a uh, sunk in it and say, "Oh hey." But they're coming back and coming back strong, and that's what I like. And they've been tell. There's a lot of passion there as well. And you can feel it, aye, because I think the man knows what he's doing. I think Martin O'Neill definitely does. There's a lot of jokes doing in him. I bedded myself in for a 38-game season, and I expected to go right to the wire. Martin O'Neill continued to be cautious, but around the stadium, you could already hear the dulcet tones of Champion, champion. Haran, Vegan, and Sutton all there. There was hardly time to gather our emptied champagne bottles, and it was straight back into the cup action and a few anxious moments at East End Park. The last and double had looked certain to ease us into the next round, when a late equaliser from Barry Nicholson forced a replay. Alan Thompson, whose free kick set up Celtic's goal. Left by Larson for Sutton, and Henrik Larson surely now wins the game for Celtic. Two minutes left, and a brilliant exchange between Larson and Sutton. Henrik Larson's second goal of the game, and you would imagine there's now no way back for Dunfermline. Chris McGrawty. 
took a good deflection for Dunfermline. Barry Nicholson! It's 2-2! Two -two! Martin again reiterated his adage that we shouldn't run before we could walk. The more nervous of us shuddered a little in the wake of the great man's warning. It fell to Lubo Moravchik to step up against Motherwell and steady our nerves. A beauty of a free kick late on in the match bagged us three vital points ahead of what was bound to be a difficult tie against Hibs four days later. It's taken by Moravchik. Wonderful goal by Lubomir Moravchik. That is absolutely stunning. I said it would take something special, and it is. Big Swede Johan Mialbi got us off the mark in the first half, but a late equaliser from Libra denied us three points and also cost us our unblemished home league record. And it goes from Thompson. Larson's header off the line, but Johan Mialbi is there in the right place at the right time. Celtic march on. Now Stuart Lovell's unlucky because he does so well here. Henrik Larson just drifts off Gary Smith. Lovell does well, but it falls beautifully there. Good delivery, as I said there, by Thompson. Larson up so well. Well, a dream chance. Lovell. It's a telling. Oh, it's going to come through to Libra. What a chance for Mark Libra to equalise. He has taken it. It's Celtic 1. Hibs won, and Celtic have lost their 100% home record. They have been held by Hibs. Still, with a game in hand, we were 13 points clear of Rangers, who had moved above Hibs into second position. The beginning of March was packed with great action. We were faced with another doubleheader, this time against Dunfermline. In the first of the two encounters, we put three past the pars in the league. The third being Neil Lennon's first for the club. And then, only three days later, back at Parkhead, any fears of an exit from the Scottish Cup were firmly dismissed. There it is! Vega opens the account, standing virtually on the goal line. Moravchik, that's a dangerous looking one, and Vega gets it in. I'm more than delighted to, to score, but my first priority is to defend well for the, for the team. And uh, I think uh, the scoring is for me like a bonus. A double double from Vega and Larson paved the way for a quick turnaround and a quarter-final tie at home to Hearts just four days later. Why don't you put your mortgage on uh, Henrik making this again? Well, that's it. I think uh, there was never any doubt after that third goal, but it's all over now. One goal was enough to take us to the semis, but with the final of the CIS Cup just around the corner, injuries to Sutton, Pettit and Mialbi were a big worry for us all. Larson's layoff. Petrov to Thompson. That's a nice touch from Alan Thompson. Time to measure the cross. And what a, what a header from Henrik Larson. The deadlock is broken five minutes from half time. Hearts have kept Larson at bay so far. But finally, Larson hits the mark. Well, it's been coming, hasn't it? And Thompson, his crosses just have been getting better and better. He looks up and he picks his spot. And who better to put it onto the head of than Henrik Larson, who makes absolutely a superb header into the far corner. Niemi really can't do anything about that one. But nobody could have predicted the shocking injury that would befall Stylian Petrov only three days later against St. Johnson. At a rearranged match at Perth, Stillian suffered a horrific leg break, similar to Henrik Larsson's fracture in Lyon the season before. It was a devastating blow to the youngster, the team, and the supporters ahead of Martin O'Neill's first cup final in charge. With this left foot that he's about to take, 
corner with. Oh, that's him, yes! Johnson gets his fifth goal of the season, and that's why Celtic are so punishing of defences. They have so many men at the corner kick to be covered by defence, and maybe their eye will and other people an instep uh, Johnson. It's a ball by Thompson again, it's there! Henrik Larson! He does this with unfailing regularity, even though he must be one of the most marked men in Scottish football. You could call him almost the invisible man in the penalty area because he pops up when least expected by the opposition. Good challenge there, and we are went down heavily and I think Petrov didn't like that either. Yep, Petrov was pointed to the bench almost immediately there. It looks to be in some discomfort. His, uh, his right ankle, we can see it again. Yep, he's two and one. I, th I actually think he was filling his cap as well, Tony. A very worried looking Martin O'Neill there, it has to be yeah, says. Brian yeah. Scott and Roddy McDonald on the field as uh, Stan Petrov is uh, strapped to the stretcher. This is a very, very worrying time. Petrov, whatever is wrong with him, recognised it right away. The season started really well for me, not just for me, for all the t for all team. When Martin O'Neill gave me a chance, I show what I can do. And I'm happy because uh, the supporters start to believe me. And really bad when I broke my leg. But nothing I can do. That is just part of my job and I need to go through and that. Oh, that is a really good example for me. Look at Henry, he just, when he back from the injury, he just broke all records here. And also I can do that as well. But uh, it's a really good example for me and I try to do the same. Despite the shock, the three points were secured and the championship was edging ever and ever closer. But before that, we had our first chance to grab a piece of silverware and number one of the treble. that one little fumble apart from that he's been quite excellent they're all in there it's in Larson's done it the deadlock has been broken inevitably the man scoring his 45th goal of the season and Hamden erupts in green and white as the Swedish international in a congested goal mark finds his base to put it away oh, once again for Celtic, has happened so often this season. We've got the breakthrough from a set piece, it was a short corner. But Avchik put in a good ball, the, the big bodies can pile in. And as usual, Henrik Larson right on his toes there. Still a bit to do. Gets his body turned and puts it into the bottom corner, giving Gordon Marshall no chance. Three players going for it, a little bit of congestion again. Here's Maravchik. Henrik Larson was screaming for it, but he let fly. He does it! Unfortunately for Chris Innes, off his foot, into the back of the net. And uh, neither Celtic nor the supporters will be worried about the in-off. Larson goes away again. This could be the hat-trick coming up. It is. He did that beautifully eventually. All the length of the field, he didn't panic. As many a prayer would have stumbled or lost his conviction, leaving McGowan for dead. And then watch this little deception there before tucking it away. Well, if there's an element of luck about his second goal, there's certainly no element of luck there. He's run half the, the length of the pitch. An absolutely magnificent composure when he gets in there. Gordon Marshall has come out just at the right time to try and narrow the angle and force him into shooting 
he just rolled his foot over the top of the ball, took it to his left and rolled it into the empty net. A fitting goal for a cup final. The final whistle goes and Martin O'Neill has picked up his first trophy in Scotland. But surely all lovers of this club will savour the individual performance of that man there, Henrik Larsson. The match was certainly not without incident, but the trophy was ours and Larsson's hat trick kept the record-breaking tradition going. Martin O'Neill certainly had us up for it. The broad smile of the face of Neil Lennon there as he comes forward with the rest of his Celtic players. Musfell Heron wasn't put under any great pressure today. Now Paul Lambert, Mr William Tucker of the CIS, presenting the cup. One of the great moments uh, to stand up there at Hampden Park and raise the cup. Well, there's Jonathan Gould. Yeah, special cheers, I imagine, for that man. And Tommy Boyd, who come on at the very last. Great Celtic captain in the past. A hat-trick in a final, you must be delighted with the performance. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm pleased. I think there was a great result for us. It was very, they made it very hard for us today. and. We managed, managed to get the first goal and uh, and then uh, we got a second one when we most needed it because uh, Chris was sent off and then once it was uh, three then the game was finished. It's fantastic, it's really fantastic. The players were absolutely magnificent from start to finish. It's been a long, long season for them. They've been leading the league for, for months and months and months. It was a difficult one today, but they were fantastic. It's the first trophy, everybody's thinking about the treble. This must be a tremendous boost for all the boys. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, a lot of pressure on it, the new manager and everything come in, but all credit to everybody at the club, for, to the manager, right down the way, what very hard. And a tribute to the manager, he's turned this club around. Oh, God, it's unbelievable what he's, what he's achieved and uh, hopefully he can continue. The tension before the Aberdeen game at Petodje was immense. If they won, Celtic would be only 180 minutes away from clinching their first league title for two years. It may have been April Fool's Day, but any joke was on the Dons. Well, Aberdeen are actually unbeaten in six league games, but this is the ultimate test for them against the runaway leaders, the champions-elect, Celtic. Although Rangers have had their injury problems, obviously, this season. They still can't take anything away from O'Neill's achievements. Now, Didier Gatt, he turns, he scores! A breakthrough for Celtic, and they are closing in on the Scottish Premier League title. Well, it hasn't been in the game, Ian, but what a contribution to make when it really mattered by Didier Gatt. I think, eventually, this goes through the legs of Jimmy McAllister. Ryan Essen, wrong-footed, you see McAllister, he's tight on him. Quick spin there by Agat, and the shot caught Ryan Essen on his heels. Lambert, it's all over. Martin O'Neill edges closer to the championship. Job done in Aberdeen tonight, but they were certainly made to work hard for it the atmosphere at the final whistle was just incredible for 20 minutes after the end of the match the fans danced in the seats much to the admiration of martin o'neill well do you think these fans are celebrating now you wait till you see them next saturday if it does happen that way it finishes at Petodri. aberdeen nil celtic one so the treble really was on the cis cup was won the league was within grasp, potentially before the SPL split, which would be an incredible feat, and the semi-final of the Scottish Cup lay ahead against Dundee United. Was even the ever-cautious Martin and Ill beginning to think what just one shot year ago would have been the unthinkable? This was to be one of the biggest weeks in Celtic's history. 
The objective was straightforward enough. Beat Dundee midweek and then victory over St Mirren on Saturday would mean securing the title in front of a home crowd before the split. At the Dundee game, the fans were treated to the first airing of the new home strip. A bad omen? Not likely. But the Dark Blues were not going to give in that easily. Great positioning again. And in the goals, that's it! Johnson. He did brilliantly to get away from his marker and put that away. Great positioning by Larson to start off with. There was still a lot of work to be done with it. Matero, Nardito. Then Sanzi. Driven in, and that's it. Sarah equalizes. Now, what kind of response can Celtic show for that? That's a decent one, it's away, just off the line, it's in. Jordi's done it. Park head erupts as Jordi puts that away. And I make it eight minutes remaining. from the championship and the final whistle paradise was on its feet the roar must have been heard for miles this had to be one of the tensest games of the campaign but in true celtic fashion the boys battled on so desperate were we to win the title at home the championship was coming back to celtic park we just had three days to stock up on champagne and assorted other baby before the tie against St Mirren, in a game we had to win to secure the title on the day. The sun was shining and the stadium was full, with one or two familiar faces in the crowd. Not been the most polished display of football in the afternoon, but Jordy Tommy Johnson pulled a little something out of the bag to clinch the title for us, even if it was on the second attempt. And Larson, it opens up for him unselfishly to Tommy Johnson. Johnson gets the party going. Something have turned up. He's going to release the shot himself. Terrible touch from Tommy Johnson. And he does well enough for the second attempt. And this is a game well, it doesn't matter who is in this afternoon as long as it goes in. And at last, some of the pressure is off Celtic. After that, we just couldn't wait for the match to end. But eventually, when the final whistle did go, the celebrations could begin in earnest. Still they dream of a tremendous treble 
The League Cup is theirs, the League Championship is theirs. Two down, one to go. What a difference a year makes. Last season, Celtic finished 21 points behind Rangers. Today, they have moved 22 points ahead of them. And just get a load of this. Silence, this is the bit we're waiting for. I think, I, I would like to thank two, two sets of people. I would like to say, I'd like to obviously thank you for your massive support. This is one of the great days of my life. And the, truth, the truth of the matter is this year, we could not have won this without the players. Thank you very much. And so the league was won, and we were 21 points clear of Rangers. And the partying continued well into the night, here and around the world. I mean, we won the championship today, so what more can you ask for? No, it's very, very hard, but... We won the league! We won the league! We mostly both of us are absolutely delighted. Sorry. Just phenomenal, phenomenal. No, it's, as a player, you always want to win as much as possible when, uh, when you play for your club. And uh, this is my second uh, championship medal here at Celtic, and... Uh, it always uh, feels as good as the first one. I'm happy that uh, I've only won a prize, you know what I mean? It's the first big prize I've won in my career, so I'm really happy. You know, to walk out, when I, when I walked out, first of all, as manager, away back when we played Bordeaux, you know, to a, a great welcome, and you never, you could never believe in your wildest dreams it could end like this. It's because they play like gentlemen, and they play fast and furious. There's nobody can beat them. Yeah, it just shows you a turnaround a uh, year makes. You know, last year we were saying we're five years behind Rangers. So, you know, it's, uh, it's funny how things turn around. All of a sudden, you're saying to yourself, we tickers going, and uh, you see, is the party going to be spoiled? But fortunately, it hasn't been spoiled. Undertaking all the, the hopes and the dreams of, of the support, all the pressure that goes with it, and they've handled it absolutely magnificently and also the most important people with all as the supporters. Uh, tonight I'm just one of them and, and just as happy as any Celtic supporter. Um, they're coming here to Scotland, Dale Winton, Pavarotti, Domingo and Carreras, and it's called three tenors and a nine bob note. <laughs> Competition wrapped up. The champions travelled to Hamden to face Dundee United in the semi final of the Scottish Cup. The Tangerines had had a good spell recently, so would be no pushover, even for the champions. Or so the pundit said. Does well to swing it in. Larson with a diving header. Marvellous goal from Henrik Larson. Well, they obviously hadn't reckoned on Henrik Larson. The Super Swede maintained his record in breaking records when he glided past Charlie Nicholas's long-standing goals tally, taking him to a post-war record of 49 goals in one season. 
Lovely cross in there from Chris Sutton, but what about the timing of the run from Henrik Larsson? Larsson's layoff. There's Thompson to Larsson again. The turn, is that a penalty? Yes, says the referee. He turned inside. He was caught by Danny Griffin. Yeah, well, that's a really positive, and I uh, don't think there's any doubt that there was a tangle. And Henrik Larsson has already scored two penalties in the Scottish Cup. Up he comes and makes it number three from the penalty spot in the Scottish Cup. He makes it 2 0 to Celtic, and he takes his goal tally. To 49 for the season. It's a post war record. With Jackie McNamara slotting home the winner, we were holding course for the first domestic treble since 1969. Sometimes the pundits should pay more attention to us fans. The 22nd of April, in case you've forgotten, well, perhaps you have, it was quite a week after all, and it was party time again as we all awaited the arrival of this. The Championship Trophy! Oh, you beauty! The match against Hearts was simply the pre-entertainment for the celebrations to follow. Although majestic as ever, Lubo made sure we wouldn't forget the fixture. Johnson for Henrik Larsson, and he's put it through to Moravchik! He came off the bench to make the difference. Lubomir Moravchik finally breaches Hearts. Well, it's a terrific feed, first of all, from Tommy Johnson. He had a delightful reverse ball, not for the first time tonight. Moravchuk had carried his run forward. Still a bit of work to do through in the goalie, but, uh, well, he's got all the composure and the technique in the world to finish this off. And he makes a very good job of it. And the good times started to roll. For only the second time since 1988, the Scottish Premier League trophy is coming to Celtic Park. Even when the Celtic fans were suffering, they were singing, you know, walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. Nobody here is walking alone, because Celtic are the champions. Celtic drew 1-1 with Hibs, a result which handed the title to Rangers. Celtic were in disarray, but from a season to forget to a season to remember, it's been said before and it'll be said again, what a difference a year makes. No one gave them a chance at the start of the season, no one at all. And they have been absolutely magnificent, they've been the best team in the country by a long, long way. Larson's contribution has been gigantic. Didier Agat played such a prominent part too. Been out injured for a while. How about this man? Listen to the reception for Stylian Petrov. And Alan Stubbs, who won his battle with cancer. Uh, brilliant. What a sight that is he. Morton Beekhall suffered from a terrible brain virus. Uh, wonderful Ian. And wonderful to see him back in training this week for the first time as well. We wish him well. Here comes the main man though, Martin O'Neill. With John Robertson and Stevie Walford. Martin O'Neill has transformed this famous club. We shall not be moved has been the rallying call from the Celtic fans all season, but they'll be moved in a different way now. Moved 
by the emotion of all this, by seeing their team, their heroes, crowned champions. We'll be in no hurry to go home, despite the atrocious weather in Glasgow this evening. They're going to stick around for a while. They're going to be singing in the rain. These guys will be back in pre-season training before the notes and uh, it'll be game on again. So they really have to make the most of this and enjoy it. And Rangers will be back at them next season, make no mistake about that. An honourable mention too for Hibs this season, they gave it a go and were wonderful to watch. But it's time to forget the rest and take a look at the best. Sensation. Before we got to the cup final, we had a small matter to deal with in the league. The final old firm match of the season and at Fortress Ibrox to boot. It had been seven years since we'd beaten Rangers in our home turf and on that basis there were doubts we could do it. What? Us beat Rangers at Ibrox? Well aye. We'd already thumped them three times this season. And what a match. Lennon's free kick. Larson. Into the path of Lubomir Miracic. He's through! And he scored! It's 1-0 to the champions, and it's little Lubo. Well, Henry Larson does magnificently in to hold it up under pressure from Bert Contum and needed a bit of support. It came from Moravchik, who was prepared to get forward and help him. And from there on in, he had the composure to pick his spot. Maloney's flick. Oh, Moravchik's going to be in again here. Where are Rangers? Lubomir Moravchik. Is he going to get a second? You better believe he is! It's a double for Moravchik and Celtic are heading for their first win over Rangers and Ibrox for six and a half years. Oh, I couldn't have showed any more composure in. Wonderful finish by a wonderful footballer. Away by Ferguson. Here's two guy. Oh, two guys stumble. McNamara slips it through. Henrik Larsson round the keeper, the angles have been acute, but that doesn't matter, he's done it, it's a fabulous 50 goals in a season for Henrik Larsson, and that is the perfect end to a perfect day in a perfect season. Two guys caught in possession, Jackie McNamara looking for a runner, Larsson shows enough composure to get around the keeper, tucks it away, and well... I think we've used all the adjectives, adjectives for this man in. And once again, it's a special finish from a very special striker. It's all over. The Celtic fans must be wondering if it can get better than this, but they will know that it can, because they have the Scottish Cup final coming up in a month's time. Two sensational goals for Luba the Magician. And Henrik Larsson, King of Kings, scoring his 50th of the season. Unbelievable. Rangers nothing, Celtic three. Three goals in our third league victory over Rangers in this treble winning season. That has a wee ring to it, don't you think? SPFA Premier League winner, the man that makes it look so easy, Henrik Larsson. And a great finale to the day. Henrik Larsson was awarded Players' Player of the Year and Stylian Petrov was awarded Young Players' Player of the Year. A truly fitting tribute to two of the shining lights of the campaign. What a season. It just couldn't possibly get any better, could it? Wait a minute, of course it could. We still had the Scottish Cup final to come and the chance of the first treble in 32 years. And as for the league, well, the title might have been won, but there was still all to play for. We were going for as many points as we could possibly get. The next Thai Easter Road was blessed with warm sunshine and the return of Alan Stubbs from his devastating illness. And a wonderful reception there for Alan Stubbs from both sets of supporters. The big Scouser needed just one match to earn his championship title badge, and he did that in true Stubbsy fashion, heading home a great goal in a 5-2 victory over a team who had caused us more problems than anyone else this season. 
Ratchik again. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, the chin. Yes, the final touch there by Jackie McNamara, I think. He got in. And that goal was very poorly defended. Here's the shot. Driven in hard. And there's Jackie McNamara getting the credit for that one. Boyd, but that goal he scored. Almost got through Thompson. Good play, Agat. Five one in, and it's just taken there. I think the goal's been awarded, yes. McNamara again, would you believe? Colgan went for that, couldn't grip it. I know the hips players look towards the referee, but Jackie McNamara scoring a couple, his sixth goal of the season. And a long time since uh, Jackie has scored two for Celtic in a one game. Very careless hips in midfield, they could be punished for it. Looks as if they might be. And that's him, yes! The third goal. He hasn't been in the game all that much, but he doesn't need to be when he can accelerate like that, get away from defenders. And that all stems from really shocking slack play by Hibbs in midfield. Colgan did get his hand to it. come back to football with a goal which delights that support 4-0 Kravchik shouting for it and gets away a oh, great play by Maratchik yes great goal by Maratchik it was all about professional control and discipline. He might have been dispossessed once or twice in that run. But look how he finished that. Unfortunately, for the last two league fixtures, we experienced the unfamiliar taste of defeat. So we'll forget about that. But there was also the warm recognition of promise for the future in the airing of a confident young side with Jamie Smith. Colin Healy, Mark Fotheringham and Sean Maloney all coming into their own. We may not have reached the dizzy heights of 100 points in a season, but after the campaign we've had what we're long going to remember as the day we won the championship. There's another day this season that will live with us all forever. Sadly, and to the shock of everyone, Celtic legend and Lisbon Lion Bobby Murdoch died after a short illness on the 15th of May, aged only 56. Bobby was a monumental ambassador for Celtic and he will be sorely missed by his family, his fellow Lisbon Lions and all the Celtic supporters who delighted with his outstanding performances during that great era of Jock's team. Devil. Better. It's all! Celtic has scored! And without a doubt, the European Cup is on its way to Glasgow. Bobby was a huge Celtic fan and would have loved to see the boy secure the treble. He will always be remembered. Thanks, Steve. Good evening, everyone. So, a night that was meant to bring so much joy to Celtic fans also brings such sorrow with the untimely death of Bobby Murdoch. The champions of Scotland against the champions of England. Tom Boyd. 10 years at Celtic. And the crowd were making their way towards the ground for the past hour to pay tribute to this most loyal servant. 35 years old, a Celtic fan since a young boy. He's played under nine managers since his Celtic debut in February 1992. is a get now for Celtic. Moravchik waits. It's over Moravchik's head. Oh, great header by Larson. Kept out by the frame of the goal. 
51 goals this season for Larson. Alec Ferguson put odds of 4 to 1 on Larson failing to score against his team. He almost managed it there. Giggs. Oh, and here's a bit of space for David Beckham. Sylvester, 1 0. And it's Michael Sylvester who scores the game's opening goal. Here's Djordic. He's tried to chip the keeper. He's done just that and settled the game. Sheringham helping out in defence. Away by May. And there's a final whistle on a night when the Celtic fans came to say goodbye to Bobby Murdoch. Thank you to Tommy Boyd. Terence, what a great night for Tom Boyd and his family and all his friends and supporters. Yeah, marvellous. It's wonderful for players. Given loyalty to a club for ten years and it has to be recognised and we're, part, we're glad to be part of that tonight. How impressive have you been by the work and the, uh, the, the turnaround Martin O'Neill's made here at Celtic? It's been phenomenal. It's been, I thought he would do really well. I had a great confidence in the lad and he's, he's progressed so much since he started at Wickham. And his buys are always sound. Um, he, he concentrates really very hard and makes sure he's got good teamwork, good team spirit. Uh, and he's got a strong personality, which is important at a big club like Celtic. And then I think that um, he did what I expected him to do. The, the two sides have never played competitively, but next year could be different in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least tonight I ended the, my worst record in football tonight. It's the first time I've beaten Celtic in a testimonial. After the Man U match, all thoughts were directed to Hamden. Mine, yours and the entire Celtic squad. The questions centred around who would make it back from injury, who would be unfortunate to miss out and, of course, the most frequently asked question of the season. How many would Larson score? When the Celtic fans coined O oh, Hamden and the Sun as their own in 1957, they created an anthem that has set the scene for countless cup finals. But since 1969, never one quite as special as this. So, as if you need reminding, let's revisit the scene and remind ourselves of just how we got to this spectacular finale. I will do everything I possibly can to bring some success here to the football club. <laughs> Martin O'Neill arrived and bang, we beat Rangers 6 2. We went top of the league in September and stayed there. We thrashed Rangers again to win a place in the CIS Cup final against Kilmarnock, which we won to give us the first of three trophies. Then we proved how great the Celtic team is by steamrolling all before us. After a season like this, we knew that the Cup final against Hibs on the 26th of May could mean only one thing, the treble. Sorry, two things. The treble and the chance for the... Uh, What's his name? To bag another couple of goals? Well, the feeling around the place is, um, you know, everyone's anticipating, you know, the, uh, the cup final. I think we're just going to go in there and I think about the travel, just like, take it as, you know, trying to win the cup, really. I would be happy if Celtic win at next 32 years old time. The sun is shining bright. I look at us player for player and I look at sides around Europe and you know on the day we can beat anybody. I think the, the club in, in many ways has been born again this year. I, mean, I think you go out and about around Glasgow, you see your pals from the school days and everything, the guys that are all, you know, Celtic fanatics. And it's just great to see the, the upbeat, you know, manner that uh, they've all acquired over the last few months. That certainly comes with the team playing well, winning games, and most importantly, winning trophies, you know. So I think for everybody, uh, it just means the exact same thing, and that is that the, the club can go forward now, hopefully into the Champions League, and take the club to another level. And I know that is a really long time for Celtic to know in the travel, and that's come for a good time also now. Celtic need to play in the Champions League, and like, 
it's a really good time for all supporters to see how Celtic gonna win the treble and to play in the Champions League. You know, this is a club that meant a lot to me, even as a boy. And uh, the fact that the manager had moved up here just compounded the feeling that I wanted to come up. And uh, I've never regretted the decision the minute, since the minute I've been here. The way the season's went, uh, it's a magnificent achievement uh, for the lads. Up to now, even without the Scottish Cup, I think the way the season has went on, uh, I mean, everybody's talking about it, you know. Yeah, I think they'd be considered disappointed if they didn't win it for them now, you know. It have to be the 6 2. Um, I thought, you know, when we beat them, we after the game, certainly, we we had a belief that we could go on then, and, uh, you know, we weren't scared of anybody. So it was, uh, that was good confidence wise. There's managers that will come in and look at players and think, no, oh, they're no my cup of tea, and they'll, they'll switch off for them. I think Martin's the type that uh, will come in and look at them and see them, you know, discarded in in many instances. And I think he sees it as a challenge to try and get them to, to go in and play above themselves. Celtic are a far bigger team than Manchester United will ever be. Hail, hail the Celts are here, we're going to do the treble! that I do, I really, really do. Most bookmakers of Celtic at roughly 2-1 to one on to win the trophy this season, which started on the 30th of July at Tannadice with a 2-1 win in the SPL. And Celtic have barely looked back since. The odd hiccup along the way, but nothing serious as they've put the CIS Cup in their trophy cabinet, followed by the league championship, and they reckon this afternoon that they can add the third leg of the treble, the Tenant Scottish Cup, and that would clinch Celtic's first treble, domestic treble, since 1969, the days of the late great Jock Steen. Big reception from the Celtic and the Hibs fans. Green and white all around Hamden. Chris Sutton's header. Frank Sose's left foot volley. Up to Agat. And that's tenacious play from Larson giving Agat no time on the ball. Here he is again though. Twisting away from Larson this time. Back goes Jack. Gets his pass away. Chance for McNamara! Jackie McNamara gives Celtic the lead with his third goal of the Cup campaign. Moravchik's replacement after 15 minutes. And it's he who fires Celtic in front. It was, and they got absolutely superb strength. I thought... McNamara had lost the chance to put that ball in the back of the net. His first touch wasn't the best, as you see this pass being played through to him. Actually ran beyond him, but he managed to get that left foot onto it and just drift it into the back post. Terrific support from midfield from Jackie McNamara. Martin O'Neill elated. The Linen's header, Libra's after it. Schmattman Valharan again. Thompson. Driven pass towards Sutton. Sets up McNamara. Larson! Brilliant! Henrik Larson's 52nd goal of the season. Celtic on their way to the treble. And quality written all over this strike from Celtic. Once again, McNamara timing in the run. Absolutely superb, but just look at that finish from Henrik Larson. He hasn't had one of his better games, but my, my, when he gets a chance, he certainly knows where he's putting it. Curled it right into the top corner. 
given Colgan absolutely no chance whatsoever. Larson's layoff. Thompson. Chris Sutton. Henry Larson. He's away from Gary Smith. He's told down. It's a penalty kick. Larson peeled away from Gary Smith. He got that half yard on him. And there always looked to be problems for him. Yeah, it was. It looked as though Gary Smith perhaps got a little bit in the ball there, but uh, making the challenge always difficult to decide whether you're going to go into a challenge in that situation. Yeah, the fistful of his shirt, in any case. Yellow card for Gary Smith and a chance for Celtic to make it three. Larson. <laughs> Two for Larson, three for Celtic. Ten minutes left. And the treble is there. 53rd goal of this remarkable season for Henrik Larsson. He certainly struck it well, didn't he? Just picked his spot and side-footed it beyond a Colby. Celtic seconds away from a glorious achievement. McNamara has a free kick. The season is over, the treble is won. Martin O'Neill's memorable achievements welcome another edition. The Tenant Scottish Cup is theirs. Jackie McNamara scored in the first half, that man Henrik Larsson scored twice after the interval and Celtic have the Scottish Cup to add to the championship and the CIS Cup final as well Marty, congratulations can you believe it's happened, what a season you've had. it's been absolutely enormous and to finish it off today in front of our supporters and a packed hand and it was, it's just been immense you stick into this game, you can do it quite well you know <laughs> It's been a great season. I know you'll, you'll, you'll talk to me sometime early, early July, and say we start again. But it doesn't matter. Today, it's been about the players and the supporters. I am, honestly, I'm so, so pleased for both sets. Whatever you do, the supporters have been fantastic, but the players have got to do it, and they've done it again. You know, they had to razz themselves again, which I didn't think was going to be a, a, a problem. But it, just in case they get a little bit tired, there was no sign of it. The second goal turned the point, didn't I kill it again? I, personally, I was pleased with the first goal. And uh, McNamara took it brilliantly, really pleased with that. A good pass from Didier, but he still had to put it in the net. Second goal just after half time settles everything. Henrik, what a smile, that's it. Of all the days you've had this season, that's the happiest I've ever seen you look. Yeah, now, I mean, uh, we won the league early and the CIS Cup, and then everybody's been on about the treble. And uh, now we're done, it, I can talk about it, it's no problem. It's a great feeling, yeah. This was the one I haven't won yet in Scotland, but uh, we managed to win it today, so I'm uh, very, very pleased. The second goal was it killed off him, so it didn't. It? Yeah, I mean they had a little bit of pressure on us, but we got the second one, and then gives us a little bit more breathing room. They have to come forward. We drop back a little bit and just try to pick them up. And uh, yeah, we got the chance and got the penalty. And, uh, then was For Celtic, it's success after success after success. The CIS Cup, then the title, and now the Tenant Scottish Cup is theirs. Team captain Paul Lambert and club captain Tom Boy take delivery of the old trophy. Robert Douglas, he'll be able to tell his grandchildren he kept a clean sheet in his first Scottish Cup final. And the glory days go on and on for Martin O'Neill. Jackie McNamara, whose goal broke the deadlock towards the end of the first half. Alan Thompson, who's been such an inspired signing, same can be said of Chris Sutton. A bad season, a disappointing season with Chelsea, but uh, nothing disappointing about this campaign for him. The impressive Johan Mialbi, Celtic, will keep him for a few years more. Ramon Vega's future immediately is uncertain. He, as well, has done a good job. Uh, 
and Alan Stubbs, so wonderful it is to see him back in the first team squad, having gone through so many problems. And Henrik Larsson, the man of the season, 53 goals, three winners' medals, and maybe yet to come, the golden boot is Europe's top scorer. Didier Agat, well, cut twice, doesn't quite cover it. And Lubo Madavcic gets his hands on the cup as well, having lasted less than 15 minutes of the cup final. But he's more than played his part in Celtic's achievements this season. And it's going to be one wheel of a night for Celtic players and management and supporters all over the world. Fantastic season we've had and the day just rounded it off really. Everybody connected to the club and especially supporters, absolutely amazing. So, uh, long may it continue. Oh, brilliant. I think, uh, look back on it in uh, many years and uh, show the grandkids the medals and uh, tell them I was involved in a uh, special season. I think it's one of those things that doesn't really settle in until you, know, you go away on holiday and you, and you reflect on the season. Um, you, know, you get mixed up in the emotion, and it's been a great day, it's been a great season, but when you look back, that's when you realise you know, what, what, what an impact it's, we've really had here. Yeah, it's fantastic, great feeling. Uh, I've just been coming on as sub for Lugo, but it was a uh, good feeling to get the score the first goal. To be involved and to be on the bench, you know, was was beyond me wildest dreams. You know, I've always said all along, you know, for me to get in the squad for the cup final was was an achievement. You know, but to be on the, on the bench, you know, was was even extra special. The management team and the boys have, have made me feel part of it, and I'm uh, I'm delighted for the boys and the man uh, management team to to have achieved such a historical thing, you know. It's only been done three times, and the last one was 30 odd years ago. Uh, I'm in the history books now, and you know, we might be on the walls now, you never know. Our ugly faces will be all over Celtic. What a season. The treble. We've won the treble in a spectacular year that has made us prouder than ever to be Celtic fans. The team's written themselves right into the history books, and just think, we're going to get the chance to try and do it all again next year. Yep, more fantastic action. The defence of our title, the Champions League, and our domestic cups to hold on to again next season. I can't wait, and I bet you can't either. But in the meantime, let's enjoy this treble for all it's worth. So, jump up and rewind the tape, and while you're up there, make mine a treble, pal. <laughs>